In nuclear physics, beta decay is a type of radioactive decay in which a proton is transformed into a neutron, or vice versa, inside an atomic nucleus. This process allows the atom to move closer to the optimal ratio of protons and neutrons. As a result of this transformation, the nucleus emits a detectable beta particle, which is an electron or positron. Beta decay is mediated by the weak force. There are two types of beta decay, known as beta minus and beta plus. Beta minus decay produces an electron and electron neutrino, while beta plus decay produces a positron and electron neutrino. I squared plus decay is thus also known as positron emission. An example of electron emission is the decay of carbon-14 into nitrogen-14, 14, 14, 6 Ca-14, 7 N plus A plus I one half E. In this form of decay, the original element has decayed into a new chemical element in a process known as nuclear transmutation. This new element has an unchanged mass number A but an atomic number Z that is increased by 1. As in all nuclear decays, the decaying element, in this case 14, 6 C, is known as the parent nuclide while the resulting element, in this case 14, 7 N, is known as the daughter nuclide. The emitted electron or positron is known as a beta particle. An example of positron emission is the decay of magnesium-23 into sodium-23, 23, 23, 12 mg at 23, 11 Na plus E plus plus I one half, E. In contrast to I squared a decay, I squared plus decay is accompanied by the emission of an electron neutrino. I squared plus decay also results in nuclear transmutation, with the resulting element having an atomic number that is decreased by 1. Electron capture is sometimes included as a type of beta decay, because the basic nuclear process, mediated by the weak force, is the same. In electron capture, an inner atomic electron is captured by a proton in the nucleus, transforming it into a neutron, and an electron neutrino is released. An example of electron capture is the decay of krypton-81 into bromine-81, 81, 81 36K plus A81, 35Br plus I one half, E. Electron capture is a competing decay process for all nuclei that can undergo I squared plus decay. The converse, however, is not true. Electron capture is the only type of decay that is allowed in proton rich nuclides that do not have sufficient energy to emit a positron and neutrino. I squared a decay. In I squared AA decay, the weak interaction converts an atomic nucleus into a nucleus with one higher atomic number while emitting an electron and an electron on neutrino, I one half, E. The generic equation is, AZNAAZ plus 1 na euro unregistered trademark plus A plus I one half, E, where A and Z are the mass number and atomic number of the decaying nucleus. Another example is when the free neutron, 1, 0 n decays by I squared AA decay into a proton, NAP plus A plus I one half, E. At the fundamental level, this is caused by the conversion of the negatively charged down quark to the positively charged up quark by emission of a WA boson. The WA boson subsequently decays into an electron and an electron on neutrino, DAU plus A plus I one half, E. I squared AA decay generally occurs in neutron rich nuclei. I squared plus decay. In I squared plus a decay, or positron emission, the weak interaction converts a nucleus into its next lower neighbor on the periodic table while emitting a positron and an electron neutrino, I one half, E. The generic equation is, AZNRZ1 na euro unregistered trademark plus E plus plus I one half, E. I squared plus a decay cannot occur in an isolated proton because it requires energy due to the mass of the neutron being greater than the mass of the proton. I squared plus a decay can only happen inside nuclei when the daughter nucleus has a greater binding energy than the mother nucleus. The difference between these energies goes into the reaction of converting a proton into a neutron, a positron and a neutrino and into the kinetic energy of these particles. In an opposite process to negative beta decay, the weak interaction converts a proton into a neutron by converting an up quark into a down quark by having it emit a W plus or absorb a 1. Electron capture. 
in all cases where I squared plus a decay of a nucleus is allowed energetically, the electron capture process is also allowed, in which the same nucleus captures an atomic electron with the emission of a neutrino, AZN plus A as a 1 na euro unregistered trademark plus a 1 half, E, the emitted neutrino is monoenergetic. In proton-rich nuclei where the energy difference between initial and final states is less than 2 mech 2, I squared plus a decay is not energetically possible, and electron capture is the sole decay mode. This decay is also called K capture because the innermost electron of an atom belongs to the K shell of the electronic configuration of the atom, and this is the highest probability to interact with the nucleus. There is an analogous process possible in theory in antimatter, and tipraton rich antimatter radioisotopes might decay via an analogous process of positron capture. But in practice, no such complex antimatter nuclides have either been discovered or artificially constructed. Q values The Q value is defined as the total amount of energy released in a given nuclear decay. In beta decay, Q is therefore also the sum of the kinetic energies of the emitted beta particle, neutrino, and recoiling nucleus. Beta particles can therefore emit it with any kinetic energy ranging from 0 to Q. A typical Q is around 1 MeV but can range from a few keV to a few tens of mV. Since the rest mass of the electron is 511 a keV, the most energetic beta particles are ultra-relativistic, with speeds very close to the speed of light. Nuclear transmutation If the proton and neutron are part of an atomic nucleus, these decay processes transmute one chemical element into another. For example, Beta decay does not change the number A of nucleons in the nucleus but changes only its shadia Z. Thus the set of all nuclides with the same EA can be introduced. These isobaric nuclides may turn into each other via beta decay. Among them, several nuclides are beta stable, because they present local minima of the mass excess, if such a nucleus has numbers, the neighbor nuclei and have higher mass excess and can beta decay into, but not vice versa. For all odd mass numbers A the global minimum is also the unique local minimum. For even A, there are up to three different beta-stable isobars experimentally known. For example, 96, 40 ZR, 96, 42 Mo, and 96, 44 Ru are all beta-stable, though the first one can undergo a very rare double beta decay. There are about 355 known beta-decay stable nuclides total. Usually unstable nuclides are clearly either neutron-rich, or proton-rich, with the former undergoing beta decay and the latter undergoing electron capture. However, in a few cases of odd proton, odd neutron radionuclides, it may be energetically favorable for the radionuclide to decay to an even proton, even neutron isobar either by undergoing beta-positive or beta-negative decay. An often cited example is 64, 29 Ku, which decays by positron emission 61% of the time to 64, 28 Ni, and 39% of the time by beta decay to 64, 30 Zn. A beta-stable nucleus may undergo other kinds of radioactive decay. In nature, most isotopes are beta-stable, but a few exceptions exist with half-lives so long that they have not had enough time to decay since the moment of their nucleosynthesis. One example is the odd proton odd neutron nuclide 40, 19K, which undergoes all three types of beta decay with a half life of 1.277A, 109A years. Double beta decay. Some nuclei can undergo double beta decay where the charge of the nucleus changes by two units. Double beta decay is difficult to study, as the process has an extremely long half life. In nuclei for which both I squared a decay and I squared I squared a decay are possible, the rarer I squared I squared a decay process is effectively impossible to observe. However, in nuclei where I squared a decay is forbidden but I squared I squared a decay is allowed, the process can be seen and a half life measured. Thus, I squared I squared a decay is usually studied only for beta stable nuclei. Like single beta decay, double beta decay does not change A. Thus, at least one of the nuclides with some given A has to be stable with regard to both single and double beta decay. Ordinary double beta decay results in the emission of two electrons and two antineutrinos. 
If neutrinos are Majorana particles, then a decay known as neutrino illus double beta decay will occur. Most neutrino physicists believe that neutrino illus double beta decay has never been observed. Bound state I squared a decay, a very small minority of free neutron decays are so-called two-body decays, in which the proton, electron and entire neutrino are produced, but the electron fails to gain the 13.6 eV necessary energy to escape the proton, and therefore simply remains bound to it, as a neutral hydrogen atom. In this type of beta decay, in essence all of the neutron decay energy is carried off by the entire neutrino. For fully ionized atoms, it is possible in likewise manner for electrons to fail to escape the atom, and to be emitted from the nucleus into low-lying atomic bound states. This cannot occur for neutral atoms whose low-lying bound states are already filled by electrons. The phenomenon in fully ionized atoms was first observed for 163dy66 plus in 1992 by Yung A. L. of the Darmstadt Heavy Ion Research Group. Although neutral 163dy is a stable isotope, the fully ionized 163dy66 plus undergoes I squared a decay into the K and L shells with a half-life of 47 a days. Another possibility is that a fully ionized atom undergoes greatly accelerated I squared a decay, as observed for 187 Re by Bosch et al., also at Darmstadt. Neutral 187 Re does undergo I squared a decay with a half life of 42 AA, A109 a years, but for fully ionized 187 Re 75 plus this is shortened by a factor of 109 to only 32.9 A years. For comparison the variation of decay rates of other nuclear processes due to chemical environment is less than 1%. Forbidden transitions, beta decays can be classified according to the L value of the emitted radiation. When L greater than zero, the decay is referred to as forbidden. Nuclear selection rules require high L values to be accompanied by changes in nuclear spina, J, and paratia, I euro. The selection rules for the LTH forbidden transitions are where I I euro equals 1 or a 1 corresponds to no parity change or parity change, respectively. The special case of a 0 plus a 0 plus transition is referred to as superalloyed for beta decay, and proceeds very quickly by this decay route. The following table lists the IJ and I I euro values for the first few values of a L, beta emission spectrum. Beta decay can be considered as a perturbation as described in quantum mechanics, and thus Fermi's golden rule can be applied. This leads to an expression for the kinetic energy spectrum n, t, of emitted betas as follows. Where t is the kinetic energy, Cl is a shape function that depends on the forbiddenness of the decay, f, z, t, is the Fermi function with z the charge of the final state nucleus, E equals t plus mc2 is the total energy. P equals a sh, E C, 2 a 2 is the momentum, and Q is the Q value of the decay. The kinetic energy of the emitted neutrino is given approximately by Q minus the kinetic energy of the beta. Fermi function, the Fermi function that appears in the beta spectrum formula accounts for the Coulomb attraction slash repulsion between the emitted beta and the final state nucleus. Approximating the associated wave functions to be spherically symmetric, the Fermi function can be analytically calculated to be where s equals a sh1 ai plus or minus 2 z2, i equals a plus or minus i plus or minus z epc, i equals a rena, and i is the gamma function. For non-relativistic betas, this expression can be approximated by other approximations can be found in the literature. Curie plot a Curie plot is a graph used in studying beta decay developed by Franz and D. Curie, in which the square root of the number of beta particles whose momenta lie within a certain narrow range, divided by the Fermi function, is plotted against beta particle energy. It is a straight line for allowed transitions and some forbidden transitions, in accord with the Fermi beta decay theory. The energy axis intercept of a Curie plot corresponds to the maximum energy imparted to the electron positron. With Curie plot one can find the limit on effective mass of neutrino. History, discovery and characterization of I squared a decay, radioactivity was discovered in 1896 by Henri Becquerel in uranium, 
and subsequently observed by Marie and Pierre Curie in thorium and in the new elements polonium and radium. In 1899 Ernest Rutherford separated radioactive emissions into two types, alpha and beta, based on penetration of objects and ability to cause ionization. Alpha rays could be stopped by thin sheets of paper or aluminium, whereas beta rays could penetrate several millimeters of aluminium. In 1900 Becquerel measured the mass to charge ratio for beta particles by the method of J.J. Thomson used to study cathode rays and identify the electron. He found that Me for a beta particle is the same as for the Thomsoni Euro unregistered trademark S electron, and therefore suggested that the beta particle is in fact an electron. In 1901 Rutherford and Frederick Soddy showed that alpha and beta radioactivity involves the transmutation of atoms into atoms of other chemical elements. In 1913, after the products of more radioactive decays were known, Soddy and Kajimiliets Fajans independently proposed their radioactive displacement law, which states that pta emission from one element produces another element one place to the right in the periodic table while alpha emission produces an element two places to the left. Neutrinos in beta decay, historically, the study of beta decay provided the first physical evidence of the neutrino. In 1911 Lysmutner and Otto Hahn performed an experiment that showed that the energies of electrons emitted by beta decay had a continuous rather than discrete spectrum. This was an apparent contradiction to the law of conservation of energy, as it appeared that energy was lost in the beta decay process. A second problem was that the spin of the nitrogen-14 atom was 1, in contradiction to the Rutherford prediction of a 1/2. In 1920 a Euro 1927, Charles Drummond Ellis established clearly that the beta decay spectrum is really continuous, ending all controversies. It also had an effective upper bound in energy, which was a severe blow to Bohr's suggestion that conservation of energy might be true only in a statistical sense, and might be violated in any given decay. Now the problem of how to account for the variability of energy in known beta decay products, as well as for conservation of momentum and angular momentum in the process, became acute. In a famous letter written in 1930 Wolfgang Pauli suggested that in addition to electrons and protons atoms also contained an extremely light neutral particle which he called the neutron. He suggested that this neutron was also emitted during beta decay and had simply not yet been observed. In 1931 Enrico Fermi renamed Pauli's neutron to neutrino, and in 1934 Fermi published a very successful model of beta decay in which neutrinos were produced. The neutrino interaction with matter was so weak that detecting it proved a severe experimental challenge, and was not accomplished until 1956. However, the properties of neutrinos were as predicted by Pauli and Fermi. Discovery of other types of beta decay, in 1934 Fra copyright Dow copyright Rick and Irony Joliot Curie bombarded aluminium with alpha particles to affect the nuclear reaction for, 2 He plus A27. 13 alo 30, 15 pascals plus A1, 0 n, and observed that the product isotope 30, 15 p emits a positron identical to those found in cosmic rays by Carl David Anderson in 1932. This was the first example of I squared plus a decay, which they termed artificial radioactivity since 30, 15 p is a short lived nuclide which does not exist in nature. The theory of electron capture was first discussed by Giancarlo Wick in a 1934 paper, and then developed by Hideki Yokawa and others. K electron capture was first observed in 1937 by Luis Alvarez, in the nuclide 48 V. Alvarez went on to study electron capture in 67 Ga and other nuclides. See also, double beta decay, electron capture, neutrino, alpha decay, beta voltaics, Particle radiation, radionuclide, tritium illumination, a form of fluorescent lighting powered by beta decay, pandemonium effect, total absorption spectroscopy, references. External links, the live chart of nuclides, IAEA with filter on decay type, definition of beta disintegration at Science Dictionary.